Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at a security-oriented operating system called Cubes OS. This separates different parts of your digital life into so-called cubes, also known as compartments or domains, each of which runs in its own virtual machine. So, for example, you may have a personal cube, a finances cube and a work cube, with each isolated from the other using Zen virtualization. Cubes OS even features disposable virtual machines that disappear after a single use. All of this is, I think, very interesting. So let's go and take a closer look. So, here we are on the Cubes OS website at cubes-os.org, where if we click on download, we can get a copy of this free open source operating system. And we can also, if we wish, make a donation to the project using the donate button there. Now, before we go ahead and download an ISO, as you can see them down there, it's worth pointing out there are fairly specific system requirements for a Cubes OS. So let's just take a look at those. And if we scroll down to the requirements for a version 4, which is the one we'll be using, you can see the requirements here. Some of these are fairly straightforward, a 64-bit processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of space to install. But on top of that, we also need an Intel VTX virtualization technology with extended page tables or AMD V virtualization with rapid virtualization indexing. And we also need Intel VTD or AMD VI. And what all of this means is that we must have pretty modern hardware which allows a virtual machine to directly access its memory and peripherals. Also recommended that you can see are a fast SSD and ideally an Intel integrated graphics processor, in other words, an onboard Intel graphics. There's a caution here against NVIDIA GPUs, although it says that for Radeon, if you've got an RX 580 or earlier, you're probably going to be okay. So those are the requirements. Let's go back to the, the download page and we've got the uh, ISOs here. And in fact, I don't have to download this ISO because I've downloaded it already. It's a quite a large file. So let's just uh, minimize our browser. And you can see I've got running here, Belena Etcher, where already the file is waiting to be uh, written. We can see that's sort of what the file is. It's clearly already there. And I've got a USB drive in to uh, write the image too. So uh, I can just click on uh, flash. And uh, as we're in Linux, it wants our password, so I'll just stick that in. And Ubuntu here will get on with writing our Cubes OS installation media. Now, with our installation media completed, there it is. We need to insert it into a computer, so we'll put it in here. And as you can see, the uh, PC I'm using is this, which is the Odyssey X86J4. 105 and I'm using this as the test rig here because my test rig I normally use doesn't meet all the hardware virtualization requirements for running Cubes OS but uh, this Odyssey x86 J4105 does and it's also got integrated Intel graphics so it should be uh, more suited to running a uh, Cubes OS. And uh, we're going to be installing on an SSD. I'm not using an NVMe SSD, which would be better, really. It would be faster. I'm using this uh, two and a half inch a SATA SSD. It'll be hopefully perfectly sufficient. So uh, let's now turn on the board. And uh, here we go. Oh, this looks uh, hopeful, doesn't it? Let's do install cubes uh, 403. And uh, I can now set my. Uh, language there, which I'll do there, which should be OK. I can continue. And I now need to select an installation disk. So we'll select the uh, SSD. There we are. That should be OK. And we will encrypt our data as this is a secure operating system. So we'll say done on that. Uh, we need to enter a passphrase, which we're using to uh, encrypt our disk. Let's use a See if you can guess what that was. It says it's weak, but it'll be OK. And if it's uh, telling us that the uh, drive is not uh, got enough space on it, but let's do it. Let's try and reclaim space. We'll uh, delete that uh, partition. Reclaim space. And now I think begin installation. And it looks like I've got to uh, put a username in. Let's make sure I get this right. What should we do? We'll do our normal uh, EC with a very simple password, ironically short for a secure system, but that'll be 
OK. Oh, well, I haven't created a root password either. Let's put that in as well. There we are, looks a bit better now. And uh, there we are, after an install that lasted about half an hour in the real world, Cubes is now successfully installed and ready for me to use. So we can uh, go ahead and uh, reboot our uh, system. And there we are, entering uh, Cubes OS. We now don't need to put in our uh, disk password, which was a uh, should unlock our media. And uh, there we are, we've now arrived at the initial setup menu. So let's click on uh, this. I think we need to select that option. Uh, create default system cubes, default application cubes, uh, etc. I think we'll take all the defaults. It looks okay to me. So we'll click on done there and then uh, finish configuration. And uh, there we are, it's finished. So if I just put in my uh, password like that, hopefully we performed a successful install of a Cubes OS. Greetings, here I am back again in a Cubes OS where I've set up an internet connection over there and I've also done a bit of scaling to the panel and to the fonts and things so you can see things more clearly in this video. And I've now been experimenting with Cubes OS for a couple of days. And after that period of time, I've concluded that this is really, really cool. I've not experimented with something so innovative in the world of operating systems for a very long time. So let me explain to you why I think it's very exciting. And we'll start with this menu here. There are some basic things like system tools. I won't go through those. But there is, for example, this option here to create a new cube. These are segments of our digital life. And you'll see when you create a new cube, you base it upon a template. And the default templates we installed in our default install were based on Debian, Fedora, and a Hunix, as you can see. But you could also have, for example, a Windows cube if you installed the relevant template. But I'm not going to create a new cube because there's lots of cubes pre-installed for us. There's a disposable Fedora cube there. There's a disposable Hunix cube. And if you're wondering what Hunix is, it routes your internet traffic through Tor, which means it hides your IP address, allows you to be anonymous online. And you can see here the various bits of software you could run up from the menu inside that cube. We've also got a, a personal cube here, set up for us by default, an untrusted cube, a vault cube, a work cube, and then also various cubes, various domains, running things like the firewall, network connectivity, etc. Everything is divided into cubes. And then finally down here, we've got access to the templates on which the other cubes are based. If we create a new cube, as you just saw, it will be based on one of these templates. Anyway, I'm sure what you want me to do now is to run up a cube or run up something in a cube. So we'll run up, for example, Firefox from the personal cube. You'll see it's starting up the cube up there. And the first time you run up a cube in a session, it takes a bit of time. It is effectively booting a virtual machine. We're not on very powerful hardware here. So I'll let this run through in real time. I might speed through some of these in the, in the future, but just to show you how long it takes to boot up a cube on the, a Celeron-based uh, PC. And uh, there it is. It's now brought up Firefox in the, the personal cube. And as you can see, it's got a yellow border. Different cubes are color coded, so you know which cube we're in, in terms of the window border, and also what's up here on the panel. And if I launch another piece of software from a personal cube, it'll be much quicker. Let's say launch the, the file manager. It's obviously a smaller thing than Firefox probably, but also the cube didn't have to start. It's come up there. If I launch, say, another piece of software, let's go down to, say, the work cube, which I had already running. Let's launch a Firefox from there. So we've now got to Firefox running in a different cube, in a different virtual machine. This is showing the documentation for Cubes OS, which is really good, very, very well documented on the Cubes OS website. So we can launch different programs running in different cubes, and they're color coded to show us what they are. And you've got controls to roll them up if you wish. You can maximize them and bring them back again where you normally can. If you minimize, they'll go up to the panel where you can identify them by the colors, as I've said. Because you could get lots of windows running, we've got workspaces here. So I could drag this across to another workspace. We're now on workspace two. There we are, that'd be over there. This one would be over here. And you can also send things to workspaces by just uh, sending them across. So we can move that to workspace two, it'd be over there. Or we can move it back to a workspace one if we wanted to, by moving it back, uh, there we are, the other way. And uh, there it is. Now, having launched a file manager, 
that's a good opportunity to talk about devices. Let's bring up another farm manager. Let's bring up the one for, uh, say, I don't know, untrusted farm manager. Let's bring that one up. That's another queue. It'll take a second to launch. We'll give it a time to do that. And uh, there we are. We've now got the farm manager in the untrusted queue with it. So red border to tell us it's untrusted. And I'm going to bring up other locations in both of those just to show you there's nothing else there other than the computer itself and the uh, networks. It's on a Windows network here. But uh, let's now plug in a USB drive. So I'm going to plug in the USB drive like this. There we are, plugged in the USB drive, and it'll now come up, hopefully in a second. There it is, look, it's been found. And there's a little device up here which allows us to allow different cubes to see it. So if we go here to the devices widget and bring it up like that, you can see all the different block devices on the system and what can access them. So we could go across here to say, give it access on the personal cube to that uh, USB drive. And oh, there it is down there. I thought it was up here. It's down here, Christopher. Look at the different colors. And you can see it's come up. We could open it up there, put it on that drive. Not a lot. One file, I think. And if we clicked on that, it would run up in the viewer in the personal cube. So it's, it's come up like that. I'd also point out that up here, we've got a very useful little thing to show you all the different domains that are running, all the different cubes running here. We can actually shut them down, pause them. Pause is really cool, isn't it? You can pause a computer if you wish, or at least a, a virtual part of one. And we've also got a cube manager down there, which will show us everything running when it comes up. I'm stressing that, this poor little machine. Uh, you should really run Cubes OS on very powerful hardware, so I'm not being fair to it here, but it's still running perfectly well. Let's just space things out. My scaling is messed it up. But you can see what is running, memory being taken, all that type of stuff. You've got a lot of control here of all your different cubes. Right. The question you might now have is what if you want to run applications that are not actually in the menu over here? As you might remember under things like a work and a personal, we've only got files, Firefox, cube settings and terminal. Well, we can do something about this. We can go to cube settings. And once we run that up, it'll come up in a second. There we are. Here's all the settings for the cube. We can go to applications and we can add to the menu all of the available applications. And by available applications, these are the applications which are installed within the template on which this particular cube is based, which here is a Fedora. So we could, for example, say we want to have, I don't know, the text editor down there. We could add it in for the personal cube, apply, and OK that. And then if we go over here to the personal cube, we can see there we are, text editor, run it up. And we've obviously got now a text editor, another nicer yellow bounded window. And we could type hello. Now, just as a, an aside, you might here want to put some text into this document from another cube. So for example, you might want to go over here to this browser, Firefox running in the work cube, and you might want to take, I don't know, that text there to put into your document. And if I press just a control C, that'll just copy the text for this particular cube, for this particular virtual machine. But if I press a control shift and C, it'll put it into the cube's clipboard, as you can see here. And if we now go back to the text editor in the personal cube, I can now click in there and uh, paste it across into our document. So we've managed to move some text from a one cube to the other. Anyway, you're probably still thinking, what if we want to have applications that aren't actually in the list which are already pre-installed? How do we install applications? And to do that, we go down to the template on which the uh, cube is based and go into its uh, settings here. And uh, the first thing we need to do is to turn on networking, which is not turned on by default in the templates for obvious reasons. We'll use a sys firewall, I think, apply and uh, OK that. So that is now online. And we can now go down to Fedora and to software, as you can see. And that will run up the uh, software uh, manager here. And we can now install applications which will become available to the cubes based upon this template. So this will take a little moment. So let's uh, transition forward in time. And uh, here we are in the future where I've installed LibreOffice and it's now running in my uh, work cube. And I've installed a MyPaint and it's running in my uh, personal cube. And to make all this work, I uh, finished off in Fedora having done the uh, software installation. But I also then turned off its network uh, connection and I went to applications and refreshed applications. So they all appeared in the list. And then I went to my individual cubes, like to the personal cube, where you can now see I've got Inkscape and LibreOffice Writer and MyPaint available in, in that cube. I went to the cube settings 
And again there, with the cube closed down, I should note, I went to applications here and again refreshed applications and added them in to the menu list. So as you can see, with a little bit of messing around, and this was a little bit of messing around, you can install applications and use them in different cubes. And the final thing I think we should do here, just because we haven't done it and we can, is to run a disposable virtual machine. Let's run up Firefox. The disposable Firefox we can use and it'll disappear after we've used it. And uh, there are, it's coming up. This will of course be like a clean install of Firefox because you can't customize anything in the disposable machine because it's obviously disposable. It's new every time. But uh, it proves the point. Always having problems with that little uh, thing there in my paint. But uh, anyway, this is Cubes OS. As you probably gathered, I'm, I'm impressed with this. It's a, a very neat way of segmenting parts of your uh, digital life by uh, having them each stored in a different virtual machine, which you can manage here in this uh, rather cool interface. Cubes OS is based on a really neat idea that's been very well implemented. Certainly, isolating different parts of your digital life is very sensible, and it's a concept I can imagine being integrated into more mainstream operating systems in the future. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.